Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this vintage Tyco Power Torque F9 locomotive in the Canadian Pacific Pac-Man paint scheme. I got this engine super cheap recently. Basically, a buddy of mine was at a hobby shop, and he actually found it for $7. So he went and bought it on my behalf, and then I just paid him back for it, which seemed like a pretty good price for an engine like this. It's uh, certainly not a high-end locomotive by any means. It's got the old power torque drive with the pancake motor, and these things were notoriously unreliable. But the original owner was nice enough to install some KD couplers on it, so it's got some value to it. Anyway, long story short, I put it on the track and it really was not showing any signs of life, so uh, it clearly needs some work before it can be riding the rails once again, but I'm pretty confident we can get this thing running because uh, these drives are pretty simple. Anyway, I'll bring it over to the track, I'll show you all what it's doing, and then we can begin uh, working on this engine, see if we can get it going. So here's sort of what this situation is right now. If we put this thing on the track and give it some power, you'll see uh, it doesn't go. We jiggle it around. You can see we do have a, a flickering light, and I can hear the motor humming, so we know that this thing is getting power, but uh, it just doesn't want to run. I think the drive might be seized, and uh, furthermore, the wheels are just so dirty, I wouldn't be surprised if it can't run regardless. But anyway, let's go uh, see if we can uh, fix her up a little. I'm quite excited to see what the gears and motor are all looking like. Sometimes these things are pretty bad. You know, the majority of these engines were made in the 70s, so they're at least 40 years old. And uh, the lubricants, in a lot of cases, are original, so they've, you know, they've dried out a long time ago. Now, in this case, things right off the bat actually look pretty clean, but we're going to have to dig deeper. I did notice something, which is that there's already a screw missing, so maybe that just popped out. But it could also be a sign that somebody's already been in here and... Judging by how clean it is, it's very possible maybe somebody already uh, serviced this drive at some point. But she ain't running right now, so we're going to need to do a bit of work. Let's see if we can get this part off. The bearings are all really clean. The question is, what's the motor looking like? Also, this is very odd. Huh. Yeah, somebody's definitely done some work on this engine before. I find it kind of interesting working on these engines, especially uh, when you find things like this, because it's, it's sort of like you're learning the history of it a little bit in a way. Let's lift this part up. Hmm. Certainly not the worst I've seen, but uh, things are not fantastic. First of all, uh, got uh, quite a bit of dirt on the commutator, but uh, also the spring looks to be uh, stuck. The whole, the whole brush is not working great, so that's a bad sign right there. And the other spring uh, doesn't look so good either. Let's see if we can take that out. Well, it's not horrible. I think that other one is really where the problem is at. Let's see if we can get that to pop out. It doesn't seem to want to. Let's see if we can get this part out. Oh, I'm surprised to see this spring is actually still good. It's better than the other one. So it seems like that brush is really where the issue is at. It's quite unevenly worn, so maybe that's a problem. I don't know. Let's see, is this seized? Hmm. This is very mysterious. It all it all doesn't seem that bad.
I can't really tell why the previous owner decided to replace an original part with this thing. I mean, it's possible this part broke and they just needed to, you know, make some sort of a makeshift solution to get their locomotive running again, but uh, it's very unusual. And uh, frankly, I don't really trust it because if this part is not applying enough pressure, it might not be uh, allowing power to flow into the motor. So that could be part of the reason this engine wasn't running. Now, as dumb luck would have it, I managed to find this original part off uh, another thing I had in my uh, spares bin. So we can actually put an original part back into this engine and it should give it a better shot of running again. So we'll see if that ends up working out. I find it's always a bit of a pain in the neck getting these uh, springs and everything back in just because these plates are very difficult to install, I find. You know, in a lot of cases, the clips that hold them in end up getting warped or melted or all the above, and uh, it just makes it really challenging to get them back in on top of the springs uh, being able to bounce away. So you have to be pretty careful. So I'm just going to try to hold that in with one finger, and then I'm going to uh, take this part right here see if we can get it on top. I don't know. This should be challenging. hoping this thing starts. Well, it's whistling, but it is turning over fine, so that's a good sign. Let's try that again. Seems all right. I think it'll be strong enough to at least power our engine, so but we'll find out once we get this whole thing back together just how much pulling capacity it has. Probably not a crazy amount, but uh, you never know. Try just adding a little bit of grease to see if we can try to get that whistling problem to go away. It's really just about getting the grease under the gear. Yeah, that's kind of what we want right there. Yeah, it all seems to be turning pretty well. Sometimes, you know, you'd want to remove these gears, but everything seems to be turning pretty well. So I'm, I'm confident that there's nothing that shouldn't be there. Like this whole drive until now. Uh, I haven't noticed anything uh, really bad about it. Like all the parts are super clean. Somebody clearly did clean this out, but uh, they didn't do a great job re-lubricating it because I don't see any evidence of oil or grease being in here. So that part's not so great, but at least, uh, at least it's not filthy. I've seen some of these things, which are just horrible, just packed with old grease. Anyway, uh, I think we can start reassembling this whole thing now. These wheels have certainly seen better days, so we're going to take a track brake and just uh, scrub those up a little bit, make them nice and shiny. <laughs> just look at the difference. It's absolutely wild. Alright, I think those are looking a little bit better. Now let's throw some oil in this thing and get the rest of the drive back together again.
All right, well, I think our engine's ready to meet the rails once again. Let's see if it will start. All right, folks, moment of truth. Let's see if the efforts have paid off. Hmm. Yes, it runs, serenity. Well, it doesn't run great. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, I think I know what the problem here is. Now, if the problem is what I think it is, it should be a pretty easy fix. A very common problem on these older power torques is the uh, pivot gear, which is the gear which creates all the torque, making it a power torque. Uh, it tends to just slip right off the uh, shaft of the motor and then it doesn't make contact with the gear anymore. So it's probably what's happened here. In fact, it is what's happened here. You can see it's uh, a lot higher than it should be. So what's important here is that when you're trying to get the gear back on, make sure that there's some pressure being applied to the other side of the shaft. Otherwise the motor will just push this plate up. So let me just get it back in like that. You can see it's nice and flat, so that's good. Uh, but we also need to apply some CA or something like that just so that this gear can hold on. Some people solder them, but uh, I find that that's kind of complicated, uh, especially if you want to take this apart again in the future and you do risk melting the gear. So applying some CA isn't bad, but you do have to be careful because if you're not, uh, the CA can run over the side and then you're going to have problems. So, so yeah, let's put like a little on a toothpick like that. Nothing... Nothing fancy, and then just dab it right over the middle. Just cover the top like that. We'll just let that set, and then hopefully that will fix our problem here. Okay, let's see if we have some better luck this time. Hmm. Might just need to break in a little. Let's see what we got in terms of low speed here. Wow. <laughs> For a power torque, that's pretty mint. I'm not going to lie. Pretty happy with that. Well, it's been running for about five minutes now, and I think a lot of the problems have ironed themselves out. It's not chirping anymore, and it seems to be a lot more smooth, maybe even a little bit quicker. I even hooked up a intermodal car just for kicks. So, yeah, I'm overall uh, pretty happy with this locomotive. You know, it's not the best runner out there, but uh, these things never were even when they left the factory back in the 70s. So for what it is, I'm pretty happy with it. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed, and with that, I would like to thank you all so much for watching.